Sisters, welcome, welcome to episode 7 of Sassy Science. Where science is sassy. We're your host, I'm Mrs. Green. And I'm Miss Hames. And today we are going to begin discussing information about rainforest and their characteristics. This would be a great time to pause the video and make sure that you have your rainforest C notes that you received in class out in front of you with a good pen or pencil with you. Rainforests? Seems like I've heard something about rainforests. What did the rainforest say when it was about to be chopped down? Well, Miss Haynes, the rainforest said, Run, forest, run! Ah, that's great. <laughs> All right, get ready because we're getting ready to start. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about some organisms in the rainforest. This isn't in your notes, so just hold on to your notes for right now. But I just think this stuff is interesting. All right, so in the rainforest, we have the largest flower in the world. Take a look at this thing. Raphalesia arnaldi, the largest flower in the world. Look how big this is compared to these children. It can weigh up to 15 pounds. That's like what a cat weighs. That is crazy big. How about the slowest animal on earth? Some of you guys really like this guy, <laughs> the sloth. He does not move very fast. He sometimes goes about a foot a minute. That is pretty slow. How about the most poisonous amphibian? These little guys, the poison dark frog. Um, the golden variety is especially poisonous. A small sample of their poison can kill 10 grown men. That is pretty poisonous. How about the largest rodent? Look at these guys. They can weigh 60 to 140 pounds. They're like as big as a seventh grader. That is crazy. How about the largest snake? Look at this guy. The anaconda. One time they found one that was 28 feet long and 44 inches in diameter. That is crazy. Glad those aren't in Carrollton or Farmer's Branch. All this is found in the rainforest. All right, so grab your notes. We're getting ready. First question says, what is the climate? Well, the average temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. Write that down. can be quite humid. Rainfall is 60 to 160 inches every year or annually. That is a lot of rain. That is probably three times as much rain as we ever get here in the Dallas area and enough to fill the classroom to the ceiling. It's a lot of rain. Um, how about the soil? <clears throat> well, because of the heavy rain and the large numbers of plants, the soil tends to be infertile. Infertile is what you're going to write in the blank, or nutrient poor, um, and acidic. Because the water, the plants take some nutrients and then the rain washes it all away before it has a chance to get soaked into the soil. <clears throat> all right. Um, the rainforest has the greatest amount of biodiversity. Biodiversity is what you're going to be writing in the blank. Than any other biome, the rainforest contains over 15 million species of plants and animals. That's a lot of different kinds of things. Bio, remember, means life. Diversity means a variety or different kinds of things. Okay? Biodiversity, different kinds of life. In fact, they have 50 to 150 different species or kinds of trees in every acre. That's about the size of a football field. So can you imagine not 150 trees, but 150 different kinds of trees just in the size of our football field. That is a lot of different kinds of trees. <clears throat> All right, where do we find these guys? Where are they located? Here's a map. The pink areas are the rainforest. And you'll see right in the center. Remember what that is called? The equator runs across the center. This is the word that goes in the blank. The equator, we find most of them there where the sun shines the most directly. It's the hottest and apparently the wettest area of the earth as well. <clears throat> All right, now we're on section two. I know the numbers kind of cut off from the copier, but where you see the big picture of the trees, there's different layers. You are going to write the layer, the name of the layer on the left side where the arrows are. Then you're going to fill in the blanks. Remember, you can pause this because I'm going to go quite quickly. You can pause it and fill in the blanks. This top layer is called the emergent layer. Emergent layer. The tallest trees are the emergents. 
towering as much as 200 feet above the forest floor with trunks that measure up to 16 feet around. Most of these trees are broad-leafed hardwood evergreens. Sunlight is plentiful up here. Animals found here are eagles, monkeys, bats, and butterfly. Up here, they emerge from all the rest of the plants. Remember, you can pause it if you need to. The next layer right here, it's called the canopy layer. This is the primary layer of the forest and forms a roof over the two remaining layers. Most canopy trees have smooth oval leaves that come to a point. We'll talk about that later. It's a maze of leaves and branches. Many animals live in this area since food is abundant or there's plenty of it. Those animals include snakes, toucans, and tree frogs right here, the canopy layer. It forms a roof or a canopy over the others. The next layer is the understory layer. It's right underneath here. Little sunshine reaches this area, so the plants have to grow larger leaves to reach the sunlight. The plants in this area seldom grow to 12 feet. Many animals live here, including jaguars, red-eyed tree frogs, and leopards. There's a large concentration of insects here. So there's not much sun, so they have big leaves so they can try and catch as much sunlight as possible. And then finally, the forest floor down here. It's very dark down here. Almost no plants grow in this area as a result. Since hardly any sun reaches the forest floor, things begin to decay quickly. A leaf that might take one year to decompose in a regular climate will decompose in six weeks. Wow. Many animals live in this area, including the giant ant eaters. All right, you can see. And we'll talk later about how some plants try to figure out, hey, we got to get up to the sun. We're going to talk about that later, too. Remember, you can pause this. You can write down. All right, we're moving on to the third section. Third section, plant adaptations. This is on the back of your paper. It's the, you're gonna have to kind of turn it sideways. Oh, actually, all right, no, this sideways is number four. All right, so what are some plant adaptations? Okay, to cope with the large amounts of water, remember to all that rain, they have drip tips. Drip tips is what goes in the blank, which allows them to shed water. This is a picture of it, and you have this in your notes. This is the drip tip. All that water, we don't want to just completely drown the plant, so the, the water is able to drip off. The next one, lianas. Climb up the tree in order to reach the sunlight. Let's take a look at what those look like. See, they like just vine and crawl their way around. They climb up to the top so that it can get to the sunlight so that it can make its own food by photosynthesizing. The next blank is carnivorous plants, is what you're gonna write in it. They use a combination of photosynthesis and digestive enzymes to obtain their energy. So they are consumers and producers. Let's take a look at one of those. The pitcher plant also uses bright colors and nectar as baits for the insects. The rim, oops, the rim and the inner wall are very slippery. Once the insect lands on the rim and says, oh, I want some of this great juice, well, it slips in and it can't get out. It falls in the liquid and drowns and then the pitcher plant slowly digests it. That does not sound like fun for the insect. All right, the last blank, epiphytes. They grow on trees instead of in soil so that they can get up to the sun. That is what helps them survive. Let's take a look at one of those. Here's some. See, they're growing out of the, they're growing on the tree instead of the soil because they need to get higher up so they can reach the sun. <clears throat> All right, now we're moving to section four. This is where you have to turn your page sideways. And um, plant, I mean animal adaptations. What are some animal adaptations? All right, the first one is camouflage. To look like plants around it, it may be camouflaged or have similar coloring. So you're going to use this word, but it really should have a D because it's past tense in the sentence that we have in our notes. It's going to be camouflaged so that they can hide. Here's some frogs that camouflage with their surroundings <clears throat> that live in the rainforest. How about these guys? Do you see the sloths here? They are camouflaged. See, he's holding on to the tree. There's his claws. <clears throat> All 
All right, now we're moving to the next one, the toucan, next to the picture of the toucan. He has bright colors to attract mates. This is the word right here that you're gonna write in the blank, mates. The bright beak, the scientists believe, is to attract mates. He has another physical characteristic, and that's his beak. It helps him to get food. Food is what's gonna go in the blank. It can break nuts and reach berries, food that other animals can't get. Okay, that was the bell. Also, the toucan has another adaptation. Well, also it's beak, but it's good for attracting mates, getting food, and the other thing, here's the word you're gonna put in there, it helps it to um, move around easily because if its beak was heavy, it would just fall forward, wouldn't be able to walk around, wouldn't be able to fly. So the beak is made of hollow uh, honeycomb-like material so that it's lightweight. All right, the next one, the next picture you have is physical characteristics that help them to fight or hunt easily. This is the Hercules beetle. And it has this big horn and it helps it to fight or hunt easily. It also is pretty strong, can carry 850 times its weight. That is a lot. All right, so hang on, there's more. What is the monkey used to? Hang on to the trees. That's right, its tail. Well, this tail is has a certain name and that's what you're gonna put in the blank. Look at that, can you imagine being able to do something like that? That is crazy. Well, they have a special adaptation called a prehensile tail. This is the word right here that is gonna go in the blank, prehensile tail. It helps them to hold on as they travel throughout the rainforest. Isn't that great? Wouldn't you like to have one of those? All right, the last one is bright colors. They help warn predators of the dangers. The bright colors say, don't eat me, don't eat me, all right, to let them know not to eat them. All right, so that's it for your notes, but let's take a look at the human impact on the rainforest. Rainforests are very important because they're so full of different kinds of life. Remember, life, different kinds, biodiversity. But sadly, the rainforest is disappearing at alarming rates. It's called deforestation, okay? The forests are decreasing. It's going from this to this to this. The main causes of deforestation are farming and ranching or agriculture. The soil isn't rich. So it means that the crops cannot be planted in the same area time after time. And so when they, they plant the crops and then they move on, it just destroys more land. Also logging, rainforest timber is used for building. They cut down the trees, used for building, for furniture, for pulping, for paper products. Every time you throw a piece of paper in the trash can, I want you to think we're helping to destroy the rainforest. We need to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Rainforest that was chopped down can grow back after a long time or succession, but it'll never have the same variety of plants and animals that it once did. All right, so that's it. So think what you can do to help the rainforest. That's it for episode seven of Sassy Science. Have a great day. All right, last, last joke. What's brown and found in the forest? Winnie's poo. Oh no!